to the hive, everyone. We are continuing down the mythology train, and this time we are visiting the Vikings. Vikings, that's ah. right. From fishing for things you shouldn't to deadly laughs, all this and more will be featured in today's video. Get your Viking drinking horns as we count down our top 10 Norse mythology stories that will leave you confused. All right, number 10, Thor goes fishing. Jormungand was yet another one of Loki's creative offsprings, born to be the destroyer of Thor during Ragnarok. In order to prevent this, they threw the great beastly serpent into the water and it was supposed to, like, to hold the world together until Ragnarok. But Thor was a little scoundrel and didn't mind risking it all. Ajir and Ran, two lovely, hospitable giants, as I heard, agreed to host the gods for an immaculate feast. But when Thor arrived, he consumed two of the three cows that they had brought for the feast. They were like, Thor, dude, that was supposed to be for everybody. So they're like, okay, I guess we're gonna have to go fishing the next day. Then Thor slaughtered one of their biggest bulls to use for bait, which also sucked, but that was gonna be okay. He was gonna be strong for fishing. Anyways, they get out into the waves, and while the one giant gets two whales, Two wheels! Thor heads out further with a bigger game on his mind. Jormungan was, after all, beneath the waves. He cast his line out, and sure enough, he got a massive bite. The force was so immense that it pulled his feet through the boat, and the serpent's head was like <sighs> coming up through the boat, about to bite him. Thor had his hammer ready to slay the beast, his mortal enemy, but then the giant cut the line because he got scared, and the serpent slithered back into the water. Then Thor was so mad, he threw him overboard. Literally, the worst guest to have at a party. Eats all your cows, almost causes Ragnarok, and then throws you into the ocean with a giant serpent at the bottom. All right, at number nine, good laugh. We all love a good laugh, right? Well, apparently a good laugh is what saved the Norse gods from facing vengeance from the giantess Skadi. You see, the gods killed Skadi's father and she demanded vengeance, but after a lot of negotiating with her, they were able to talk her out of that and instead offered her three things as reparations. The first was a husband of her choosing, however, she could only choose him by his feet for some reason. Don't ask me why. The second was having her father's eyes memorialized in the stars, and the third was just a good old laugh. Out of Scotty's three reparations, the hardest task was making her laugh. The gods tried everything to get a giggle out of the giantess, but nothing seemed to work. That's when Loki, the trickster god, came through and was basically like, step aside boys, let me handle this. And he sure did handle things. Loki then brought in a goat, tied a rope to it, and tied the other end to his nads, and proceeded to play tug of war with the goat. Like that. Both Loki and the goat screamed out in pain, as you could imagine, and Loki collapsed. And that is what made Scotty laugh. Number eight, a little bit of incest. Why not? Can we even do a list about mythology without mentioning incest? No, not probable. Why? Because, I don't know, the gods loved it. And people needed to populate their earth back then, so it wasn't too far-fetched of an idea. Anyway, even though Norse mythology doesn't love the idea of incest, doesn't mean it didn't happen. The goddess Signy fell into a pretty crummy marriage, and so to solve her situation, incest. She was married to Sajir and didn't like him because one, not a nice guy, and two, not manly enough for her. He also was a terrible husband. He killed her father and all of her siblings, except for one. Not cool, man. But the one that did survive, they teamed up to overthrow her hubby. Her two sons joined in, but they weren't ruthless killers and completely failed at all the times they tried to kill her dad. So, so she needed to up the ante, and that meant keeping it in the family, so she slept with her brother for three nights in order to spawn the force that would rid her of her husband. This son, when it came to fruition, knew what it was up, and eventually assassinated her husband. Does this remind anyone of like a certain god origin story in Greek mythology? Let me know in the comments if you're thinking what I'm thinking. At number seven, Loki the mayor. When it comes to God sleeping around with everyone and everything, Loki gives Zeus a serious run for his money. There are tons of stories about Loki hooking up with gods, people, and just about every other living thing. One of the weirdest stories about Loki's escapades is how he once had a night in the woods with a horse. Basically, the story here is that there was a horse that he really liked, a stallion named Svaldafari. Svaldafari was a horse who belonged to a mason worker who just so happened to be a giant. This giant really didn't like the gods and wanted them to just go away, and so Loki offered to help by distracting the giant's horse. Not really seeing how that's actually helping, but go off, I guess. 
Loki transformed himself into a mare, and then he and Svaldivari went off into the woods to mate. Horse Loki ended up getting pregnant and gave birth to an eight-legged steed named Sletnir. Sletnir then became Odin's steed, and this monster horse was actually featured in the Thor movie, so next time you watch it, keep an eye out for Loki's weird monster horse child. Number six, giant cloud brains. I do love gazing up at the clouds, making up stories like, that's a dragon, that's a chariot, that's a bumblebee. No one knew thousands of years ago that clouds are just dense collections of water vapor floating through the atmosphere. So when they saw things in the cloud, they thought they were real. So in a way, it kind of makes sense. According to Norse mythology, the world was made up from human severed body parts, specifically of the giant Ymir. His blood turned into the oceans, his flesh became the land, his bones the mountains, his teeth the rocks, his hair plants, and his eyelashes became Midgard. So as much sense as that makes, the clouds were his brains. His skull was tossed up into the sky, held up by dwarves, they're still up there. His brain was tossed separately, and that made the clouds. At number five, Mead and Poetry. There are many creation stories for Norse gods that are pretty weird. The gods were created from all kinds of things, and it's a little complex, but one of the weirder creation stories is that of the god Kvasir, known to be the wisest of them all. The story goes that the gods just won a war, and they were looking to celebrate their victory with a special drink. They all chewed berries and spat them out to ferment them and create alcohol. However, instead of making a drink, they made a person, and that person was Kvasir. His name literally translates to fermented berry juice, so it really doesn't get more straightforward than that. This new god became the smartest god to have ever existed. He was known to share his wisdom with anyone who would listen and traveled far and wide to share his knowledge. Sadly though, he was too wise for everyone and Kvasir was killed by dwarves and they drained his blood. They then used this blood to create a special kind of mead that, that granted poetic skills to those who drank it. It is believed that this drink was the birth of poetry, so Kvasir's death ended up creating something beautiful after all. Number four, kitten footsteps. If you have a dog that's a little tempestuous and keeps breaking out of their collar, then listen up. We've been doing it all wrong. The strongest collar is one that's embedded with the sound of cat footsteps, such as the one used to keep Fenrir at bay. Fenrir was a colossal wolf offspring of the god Loki because again, he was super creative when it came to having kids. The gods were so afraid of him that out of the three monsters Loki had, this one they kept under lock and key. They reared him up as a puppet and the only god fearless enough to approach him was Tyre, the upholder of law and order. As it grew, they kept putting chains on the beast, clapping every time Fenrir broke through them to disguise their intent as a test of strength. But soon they sought out the dwarves, because they were awesome, for their skill. They forged a chain of unequivocal strength. Instead of metal, it was made from the sound of cat's footsteps, the beard of a woman, the roots of mountains, the breath of fish, and the spittle of bird. All things that don't exist. When they showed Fenrir, he suspected something was up because it was so light. So he asked for a god to put their hand in his mouth as collateral. Tyre did so, knowing that he would lose his hand because it was gonna work. He did, and Fenrir, unable to break it, was transported to an isolated keep, and there he stayed until Ragnarok, because he's gonna kill Odin. At number three, target practice. We all know about Odin's son, Thor. He is the most famous child of the Norse Allfather, but you might not know about Odin's other son, Baldur. Baldur was known for being well liked by everyone. Well, maybe not everyone. Loki was the one person who didn't like Baldur, and he ended up being Baldur's undoing. One night, Baldur started having nightmares where he pictured his own death. This had his mom really worried, and so, as any mother would do, she sought out to protect her child at all costs. She went to everyone and everything in existence, including inanimate objects, and she asked them to take an oath promising to never hurt Baldur. These oaths were no joke, and as everyone agreed to take this oath, this essentially made Baldur invincible. The gods found this so great, so they made a game where they would use Baldur as target practice and would throw weapons and other miscellaneous items at him, only for all of them to just bounce right off of him. This was all fun games until Loki got fed up with Baldur being the center of attention. Loki ended up finding the one thing that Baldur's mother did not get an oath from, and that was mistletoe. Loki then made a spear out of mistletoe, and the next time the gods played their game with Baldur, Loki gave the spear to someone who threw it at Baldur, and then 
he died. Number two, a naughty little squirrel. Everyone has that friend that loves the drama so much that most of the time they are the drama. And of course, everyone has had squirrels ruin their gardens or outdoor wiring at some point. How on earth do these two things relate? Well, let me introduce you to Ratatosk. In Norse mythology, all creatures live on the tree of life, which includes a little squirrel who loves to cause the drama. Specifically between a dragon and an eagle who live on the tree. Ratatosk's job is to ferry messages throughout the tree and quite often the dragon and the eagle love to insult each other. The squirrel loves it so much that he will even lie to keep it going but it doesn't stop there. He will even spread gossip and unrelated news to the other gods. The squirrel will do anything to keep the hatred flowing throughout the tree which somehow explains how rude squirrels are most of the time like honestly what the heck. Except one time one came up on my shoulder and like just hung out and it was really nice. So they're not all bad. Finally at number one, Thor the Bride. If you know anything about Thor, it's that he loves his hammer Mjolnir more than anything. And if he loses it, he would move heaven and earth to get that sucker back. Well, Thor's hammer was once stolen by a giant named Thrym, and Thor and Loki came up with an insane plan to get it back. Thor tried to negotiate with the giant to give him back his hammer, but the giant said that the only way he would return Mjolnir to Thor was if he could marry Freya. That was certainly not going to happen, at least not for real. Thor decided to impersonate Freya instead and marry the giant, and when Loki caught wind of this plan, he decided to join. Loki disguised himself as a handmaiden in order to watch this whole thing unfold. The giants ended up buying Thor and Loki's disguises, and they made it to the wedding feast. The giants were getting a little suspicious because he seemed manly, and especially when it came to his appetite, but that didn't matter in the long run because the moment that Thor was able to get his hands on Mjolnir, he not only left the giant at the altar, but he killed the giant and all of the wedding guests too. Sounds like the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones, honestly. And that was our top 10 Norse mythology stories that will leave you confused. If you liked this video, smash that like button and remember to subscribe. And leave a comment down below to tell us what you want to see next. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. And I'm Brie Room. And until next time, stay, stay sweet, sweet bees. bees.